broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. We are online. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to another in the series of uh, free webinars organized by Leoron. Uh, this time uh, focusing on the APIC CSCP program and how it can change your career for the for the better. Uh, my name is Peter, and with us is my colleague Theodora as well. We are basically the team of, of consultants responsible for the supply chain and logistics portfolio here. Uh, today, uh, I will be your, uh, let's say, go-to person uh, when it comes to, to this webinar, and you can address all of your questions to me by using the questions dialog window you are probably looking on your screens down below. Um, you can type in any questions about the, the, the program or about the webinar uh, during Paul's presentation, and after he finishes the initial part, we will have a Q&A session during which uh, Paul will, uh, will answer the questions. Now, uh, I know you, you will all agree with me, uh, it is a challenging and historic time we are witnessing at the moment uh, all across the globe, and the effect and the, the impact it has on global supply chain processes is really immense and huge. Um, however, uh, one thing is for sure, we should never stop learning, innovating, and upgrading so we can become stronger and more resilient for the time that uh, lies ahead, of course. Um, that is exactly why uh, it is a great pleasure to thank you all uh, in advance for being here with us this evening, uh, both on behalf of Leoron and myself. And while we are here, I'm also happy to share an information about a uh, $200 discount coupon for all the participants on this webinar for the uh, courses booked in the upcoming seven days. So without a, a further ado, uh, it brings me a great joy uh, to introduce our expert trainer, Mr. Paul Deneman, uh, who will try to uh, bring about his magic and explain the importance of this program and how it can help uh, you to improve your careers. Uh, he's a, uh, one of the most famous APEX master instructors. He has a, a vast experience in project-based change processes and uh, his focus is uh, on uh, supply chain processes in multinational environments. Paul, it is a pleasure. The floor is yours. Hi, uh, everybody. Thank you, Peter, for having this opportunity and to do this, uh, this webinar where we will focus on, on yeah, questions and answers uh, on APIC certification and especially the Certified Supply Chain Professional Program. Uh, but don't worry if you are not interested, particularly in that program, it's also good to see uh, some elements of the other programs. What will we do today? Um, we will first have a small introduction. I will say something about myself and Peter already did some, uh, some other parts. We will go into what actually APIC certification is and also some, some differences between the programs and how it's rated all over the world. Uh, I will give you an overview of the Certified Supply Chain Professional Program, uh, what consists of the three modules and where you will get one exam to prove that you are uh, up to the certification level. Um, how do you get that uh, four letters behind your name. That's basically a process in which we take four most important steps. Uh, how do we plan it? Plan your studies because it's not something you do, uh, let's say, in one hour. It takes time and it takes preparation. Um, so making a study plan is one of the most important parts we have to do. Uh, secondly, you have to study the materials by yourself and follow some classes. And then we go going to reinforce all the concepts we have learned and practice. And practice is one of the key words in the complete APEX program. And after that, you will take the, the exam. And basically that's the only step where you are alone. Um, the other part is, is what we are going to look at. Why should you take? Uh, the CSCP program, and I will give you five key takeaways in why this program is uh, very important and will help you in the rest of your career. Um, last but not least, 
you might have some questions and we will start the Q&A session. Because of the huge number of participants, it's, it's somewhat hard to bring you all online and uh, bring the questions over there. So there should be a question button on it. Uh, don't wait up until the end of the session, but bring the questions forward at the moment uh, they pop up in your mind. Some I will see, I will try to answer directly in, in, in the presentation, but most of it will be addressed at the end of the part. So, the introduction. Who am I? My name is Paul Dennerman. I'm uh, from Eindhoven, the Netherlands. Uh, I live there, um, travel a lot around. I am uh, certified in a lot of uh, programs, uh, all the three, the APEX programs I'm uh, certified in, also in a program of uh, certified healthcare supply chain analyst, and I studied in Eindhoven industrial engineering and management sciences. I'm already, let's say, almost 30 years active as what I call a supply chain professional. Uh, I work, I do my things, all looking in the complete supply chain. What do I do? Uh, I'm a consultant. I'm, I'm advising companies, most of the times multinational companies, on supply chain issues and mainly focusing on what I call supply chain transition, changing supply chains towards another state. Um, I know a lot about supply chain, so I'm a subject, subject matter expert on those parts and I'm also uh, writing articles and giving advice on that one. International master trainer, I basically provide all types of uh, supply chain related uh, training programs where APEX is one of my, uh, my main focuses, but uh, I also do some other programs. I'm an invited speaker on conferences and uh, I know a lot because I've seen a lot of companies about supply chain, logistics, transportation, distribution, and know a lot of stories about it. What type of supply chains, what type of projects am I doing? Uh, usually in transition of complex supply chains where legislations or regulations plays an important role. Why that? Because that's interesting for me. It's not standard moving goods around, but there are also governments who are blocking that or some other part. So what type of supply chains are there? Usually where I work in, it's medical devices, it's pharmaceutical, tobacco, uh, some high-tech parts, uh, more, let's say, uh, multinational uh, supply chains. Um, I'm one of the five APEX accredited trainers worldwide. Uh, who are master trainer in all the three the programs. There are, of course, more master trainers, but most of them, they focus on one or two programs, and there are only five who have done that high level in, uh, uh, in the world. And the other one is also, or one of the other ones is also working at Liron, because Liron is, especially in the Middle East, one of the main suppliers of uh, the APEX programs. I trained over 1,000 professionals in more than 100 companies. And uh, although I'm doing this for, uh, let's say, over 25 years, I am a senior expert trainer for Liron since 2015. What is APEX certification? And maybe to answer that question, I first have to go to something else. What is person certification in general? And normally we take the definition that it's a modern and international, nationally recognized process by which individuals can prove their competence through a fair, valid and reliable examination. So normally we have something we want to certify against. Usually that's what we call a body of knowledge and it should be done by an independent party because we cannot say I certify myself. 
uh, at least a lot of companies do not accept that you are saying I'm, for instance, uh, an expert in supply chain management. So therefore, you, you use another organization to do that. Um, in supply chain uh, certification, the most recognized one is APEX. And APEX started in the late 50s as an organization of some operations managers who wanted to do something on, uh, together on production and infantry management control. After, let's say, 10, 15 years, they decided that they should have a certification in place. That was the first one, what we call the Certified Production and Infantry Management, and has already, let's say, over 100,000 people certified. In 2006, so somewhat years later, the logistics world changed and we suddenly had something what we call supply chain. We were looking also outside of the company and APIC started to use the certified supply chain professional certification program. And at this date, there are over 25,000 people uh, worldwide certified in that program. In 2016, there was the last program that's the Certified Logistics and Transportation and Distribution Program. And in that one, I do not know the exact number, but it's already over 1,000 who are certified. Some other elements, if we are looking to the organization of APEX, it's uh, merged uh, with some uh, other organizations in 2014 with the Supply Chain uh, Council. And the Supply Chain Council is known from what we call the SCORE model. That's the Supply Chain Operating Reference. Somewhat later, I will come back to that model because it's the basis of all certification. And in 2015, it merged with ASTL, that's the American Society for Transport and Logistics. And that was, let's say, the basis of the program COTD. Currently, or let's say since last year, 2019, APEX has been transformed to what we call the ASCM network, that it's the uh, American Supply Chain Management Network, and uh, there is APEX a part of and focusing more on some other parts. On materials later, you will see ASM and APEX both being used, but then you at least know what the difference is. The SCORE model, uh, the basis of all, let's say, uh, programs, is based on that we have several steps in any supply chain. We first plan to do things, then we source the material, we make the material, after that we deliver them, and if it's not okay, then we return them. In every type of that, let's say, score process of that supply chain process, we have different functions. Uh, for instance, in the planning, we are looking to master planning schedulers. In procurement, of course, we look to purchase managers, procurement managers. And in the delivery process, it's distribution, transportation, and warehouse. And of course, in the make environments, we are talking about production managers. They all look to what we call that island uh, of production, of sourcing, of delivery. But overall, we have two other functions. One is what we call the operations manager. He is looking more inside of the company and try to, let's say, tie all those departments, all those processes together. In modern companies, you usually see it at the C level. That's uh, apart from the sales and the general manager, we have the COO, the chief operating officers, and they look to all those processes. We are going to look to the supply chain manager. He or she is, of course, looking towards companies. He is overseeing everything, and that makes it also interesting because that's the only part uh, where we go also outside of the company and try to connect companies' supply chains with each other. If you're now looking in, in the current crisis situations, it's indeed the operations manager who have to 
work and to work around all types of lockdowns in all types of countries. But the supply chain manager, his concern is at the moment, how do I get materials in and how do I get them away? And that basically gives the difference also in the programs you can do in the APIC certification. First of all, the CPIM, the Certified Production and Infantry Management Program, it's more looking to the plan, source and make part. And of course, if we are going outside of the company, we have the make, the finished prod, products, we deliver and we return the products. And that's the, basically the core elements of the CLTD certification, Certified in Logistics, Transportation and Distribution. The CSCP, as the last of the three programs, that's of course overlooking everything. And of course, you can imagine if you want to be certified in that program, you also need to know something about infantry management, about production, about logistics, transportation and distribution. So in taking one of the three programs, there will always be some overlap. But the CSCP program is overlooking it all. So if we look to some of the differences in those three programs, then CPIM is looking to streamline the internal operations across the extended supply chain, where there are topics as product forecasting, master scheduling, MRP, material requirements planning, scheduling, cycle counting, infantry management receiving, and capacity planning. On the other hand, we have a course CLTD, Certified in Logistics, Transportation and Distribution, where we optimize order, infantry and warehouse management processes. And that's looking, of course, more to logistics management, more to 3PL and logistics service providers. Do we buy it or do we sell it? Transportation, all types of distribution channels and import and export parts. In the middle, we have the CSCC, CSCP program, the Certified Supply Chain Professional. They will master the end-to-end -end supply chain. It's uh, not for nothing that, that some people say that the CSCP program is a sort of mini MBA program. It's covering a lot. It's looking at how do, do I design a supply chain? How do I manage my suppliers? How do I manage my customers? But also looking to parts of 3PL, transportation, customs, and distribution. It's connecting all the elements which are there. And then maybe the first question that you have, yeah, there was a lot of training, a lot of programs, but do people recognize that types of APIC certification all over the world. Um, there was some investigation already some years ago, I think it was 2014, where they looked and asked managers in companies, uh, which is your preferred certification in let's say supply chain logistics. And the most of those um, uh, uh, answers were, of course, because we are here for APEX, uh, the APEX programs. In that time, 2014, the CO2D program was not there, but they mentioned CSCP, CPIM as the first one. Uh, in most of the cases, second, uh, somewhat less, and third, of course, also lesser. But in the total ranking, they were weighted as much as the most important one. The second one which was mentioned the most was the Supply Chain Council, the SCORE program. That currently is also part of the ASCM organization of the APEX organization. So the first two on the list are, are all APEX programs. Then you might have heard of the other ones, CPSM, what is there. They also mentioned uh, uh, PMI, Pro uh, Project Manager Professional. But personally, I do not see any relation between supply chain and project management. Uh, so I wouldn't count that one. We have the CN, CSCMP from the SC Pro Council of Supply Chain Management. That one is mentioned. Uh, a known one, it's also the SIPS program. That's very 
famous in uh, the UK, but it's focusing more on the purchasing people than on the supply chain management people. The same for the sales program, also UK, uh, and the other programs uh, are less known all over the world. So Apex is still one of the most recognized uh, certification, uh, also because it's one of the oldest certifications in that uh, part. What we also did, we looked at, let's say, job boards in the US 2018. In that one, you also see, surprisingly, CPIM as a very high one and CSCP as uh, uh, another one. The two others which I mentioned, Oracle is of course obvious to use that one, but it's basically like SAP, a training on how to use the system with some theoretical background. And uh, CSSBB, that's a black belt uh, certification. Uh, and it's in my opinion, also not counting directly to supply chain. So in that one, we have only the certified professional in supply chain management, what's also used in uh, America. So taking what is the most important one, I still go for the Apex. And when we look in managing supply chains, that should be the CSCP program. What is that CSCP program? It's based on three modules, and you will get an examination in one exam. So it's basically something you have to study. In the modules, you will find all the uh, information, but it's covering a lot. Most of the people who start with the program, they get surprised by the fact that it's a lot of information. But that's also the intention, because what Apex is going to do, they are going to check if you know things. So they are going to look if you understand concepts and be aware of the concept. And that's going outside of your own company. So you have to do everything to be certified, but maybe you are not using everything in your daily job today. But tomorrow your company can be different and then you use the other part. So it's just a check that you did everything. So what is there in the program in the modules? We built a program, an online review course, where we will go through all the elements of the uh, APEX program. On the first day, we will look at the first module. That will be supply chain design in which we have two main elements, uh, how we develop the supply chain strategy and how we design the supply chain. In developing the supply chain strategy, we of course need to know what a supply chain is and what the inputs to that strategy are. And then we will focus on the elements of supply chain management and which tools and techniques we can use uh, with it. A uh, design of the supply chain is, of course, related to a lot more parts, and we will not finalize that in the first day, but we look at business considerations, what we should design, how we should build a, uh, a design of a supply chain for new products, but also what is technology and how do we get data, how do we work with electronic business, and how do we implement uh, uh, the project and use communication for it. On the second day, we will also look at what we call the supply chain planning and execution. That's actually running the supply chain. So first we have designed it, we set it as a process, and then we have to execute those processes. And what are the main processes where we will look in? First of all, how do we procure and deliver goods and services? So what is demand management? How do we do the forecasting? What is sales and operations? How do we look at prioritizing demand? I have materials, but I have more demand than I have materials. Who do I get it, uh, the product to? What is relevant on that moment? 
That brings us also to what we go into the third day. Uh, still in procurement and delivering uh, of goods and services, we look at what the operation management and planning cycle is. What is master scheduling? How do we manage our cap capacity management? And how do we manage our inventories? How do we get our supply in? And how do we arrange that with logistics? How do we get the transportation? How do we put it in the warehouse? And last but not least, we look at all types of monetary, regulatory, and trade considerations. So what is customs elements? What are INCO terms? How do we put them in place in our process? Then in the fourth day, we are still in that module two, looking in how we execute that supply chain planning, uh, but going to look at managing the relationship with our supply chain partners. Important in that element is of course, customer relationship management, because that are a lot of elements we can take in. How do we deal with that customer? How do we manage that customer? How do we get that he buys what we want? And currently, if we look today, one of the most famous words, what is there, it's the bullwhip effect, because shops are closing down. People think, oh, I need it, and they're going to buy. What is giving a huge spike in demand, and that's going through our complete chain. And on the other hand, if all the lockdowns in all types of countries are going to end, we get the reverse part. We have to start up that complete supply chain. So how do we manage that on the supply level, but also on the customer level? And for those, there are some strategies and technologies you can do. And last but not least in that part, how do we link the customer relation to the supplier relation management part? The, th the third element of the module two is how we manage reverse logistics. So if we recall that SCAR model, we had it with plan, source, make, deliver, and the last one was return. Return is reverse logistics. And if we currently look to all those e-business uh, corporations uh, like Amazon, uh, a lot is coming back because it's the business model they're using. And we need to manage that. That's part of that element and also the waste we are creating. Then we are for the online course on the last day, uh, day five, uh, that will be uh, focusing on supply chain improvement and best practices. First of all, that's, that's an element, how we comply with all types of standards, regulations, but also sustainability, because that's one of the main elements what is coming in, corporate social responsibility. That's a key topic in supply chain management at this moment. The other key topic, and especially nowadays, is how do we manage risk in that supply chain? How can we identify those risks and how do we assess them, classify them, and take a response on it? And we can wait for it, but if, let's say, borders are going to open worldwide, there will be some changes in all types of compliance systems where we have to adhere to if we want to move goods from A to B. Last element is, of course, how do we measure, analyze, and improve that complete supply chain? We have a set of score metrics, what we will discuss. We look at all types of continuous improvement techniques and change management technique and focus on things like uh, just in time and lean manufacturing. At the end of the course, we will do at least together uh, a course quiz and have a debrief and make an action plan in how we continue with the next step in our preparation. Um, then it's the question, who should take this course? Who are the people who can do this? Of course, this one is one for professionals who are interested in increasing their knowledge and their expertise in the field of supply chain management. All those are touching a lot of parts. It's focusing on connections between companies. And what 
are, let's say, characteristics of those people who this designation is uh, um, ideal for, of course, more depth knowledge and understanding in the areas of supplier and customer relations, how we work in international trade, how we can use information technology to enable supply chain and interested in the physical elements of logistics and transportation. Um, if you have already another certification like CPIM, uh, or you work in or consult or teach in supply chain function, this would also be an ideal part to do. And last but not least, those who are working, oh, it's not the last one, those who are working in the field of supply chain management. And of course, if you work with ERP systems like Oracle or SAP, then it's useful to have that background in the part. Um, what is one of the elements what will help you if you take this de designation, if you take this course? At least you get an overview of all the processes which are relevant for moving the material through and outside of a company, but also for departments or within companies, you get a wide knowledge about all types of definitions. And that makes it easier to communicate with other people. Because if we are then mentioning safety stock, you know what safety stock is, and you can master that, and you can bring that forward to other people and uh, increase your potential within the company. Now the process in how to get there, because that's not an easy process to come there, but it's doable. And that's the first thing you have to be aware of. Everybody, or at least I have to say, almost everybody, but the ones who are in the seminar on, on pretty confident that you will do that, can make that certification. You only have to work for it. You don't get it for free, but it's doable. And that's the most important part you have to keep in mind. It's doable to get that certification. And I will explain you the four steps you have to take. In any parts, you will see this road to success. And the nice part is the end. Yes, you did it. And for every candidate I have trained, in the end, they say it was a lot, but I'm happy I did it and that, it, that I finalized it. And they come all at the top of that stairs. But they all start with something, yes, I won't do it, I can't do it, and then I want to do it. And you are already somewhere over there. Maybe you think, yeah, it's too much but you have to convince yourself that it's doable. And now we have to look in how you can do it and how you are going to arrange it and how you give it a shot. Because if you are in that process and take that hurdle, it's just the way up to come to that you did it. The four steps which are there, it's to plan your studies, then we study the material, reinforce all the concepts and practice, and finally take the exam. I will lead you to those four steps. First, we have to create that study plan. And I will give you some numbers to manage some of the expectations. What we see is that people need about 75 hours to get uh, the certification. Of that investment, usually, let's say, 30 hours are the online classes. So it's not sitting in the online classes and then it's there. No, you need to do something uh, with it and afterwards with it. And most of the uh, majority of the successful candidates say that they use that time. So it's not something we calculated. They came back afterwards and said, yes, I need 75 or more hours to do it. Is it possible and less? Maybe, of course, depending on your background and what you know. But also what you, what you see is that 75% of the candidates 
took the exam one or three months after they completed the studies. It doesn't make any sense to go into an online course or to a, a face to face course or do your self study and finalize it and wait for months because then you can start all over again. So, therefore, most of the people take the exam one month after they finalized uh, the complete uh, preparation program. Yeah, what I can give you as an expert, it's most important to look back from an exam date, create a plan, and I can help you with that, but work back from that date. So put a date in the future because then you have that, that target, that goal you can work to. But don't think that, okay, I place that stake in the ground and do it in two weeks because it takes time. You, we need to plan it carefully. Um, take the exam soon after the online course in this case. Start early. Uh, do not say, okay, I do want it, but I will do it next month. If you make that decision, if you want to go into that program, do not wait until tomorrow. Um, that's the part in how to eat an elephant. And the only answer is, it's to do it in small pieces because you don't get that complete elephant uh, in your, uh, on your plate. So cut it, make it eatable. And that's what we call learn in segments. So make it small and we will help you with it, that you look and focus on, on uh, parts of the program. And it's, this is the one, the last one, it's the one what it's, it's crucial in project management. If you have a plan, stick to it. Because if you are going to be deferred it every time, it's not a plan, it's a random uh, exercise. So that are some of the tips I want to give you and going now to what are the elements of that study plan. First of all, it's the instruction-led online review course. In that one, we will go in five days of six hours uh, to the complete program and give background and give information on what is there. That one is important because we are going to, to, let's say, to slice the elephant for you, to say this is one part, this is a part, but it's more difficult. You give you some background and walk you through all the material and all the parts. But on the other hand, we have the home learning. That's something you have to do by yourself because you have to read material. And that's a lot because if we look, it's over, thousand pages but if you reduce it to let's say the chapters and leave the indexes out it's a thousand pages of material do you re have to read it all most of you have to some can say i skipped that part because i had some university or high school of a school level on it just did it but most of you have to go through the material at least familiarize it with you that will take you some time. The other hand, we have in the learning system, the quizzes, that it's over uh, 1,200, 1,300 uh, items, questions inside. I will show you later somewhat how that works, but that also takes time. And it's in all the parts, if we are looking, practicing those questions, that's the method how you pass the exam, because with APEX exams, it's not, a, it's not difficult what you have to learn, but the trick usually is in the complete question. Um, after you did everything, you have to do the pretest or the pretest and the exam. It's also about 300 questions, what takes you time, and you go to the exam. And as an option, we could provide, let's say, an exam training where we go to some. Uh, a previous exams and do some parts inside of it. Um, can you do it all by yourself, by self-study? Of course, there are a lot of people in the world who are doing that, but there are also a lot of them who are 
getting to get stuck somewhere in the middle because it's a lot of information you have to process and to do. But it's doable. What I advise is take a class because it increases uh, not only the passing rate on an exam, but also the chance that you will even make it to the exam. And because the program, it's not a very cheap program, it's worthwhile to invest that time. After the exam, what takes three and a half hours and 150 questions, you will get that my nice certificate and uh, have the four letter CSCP behind your name. What will we do in creating the study plan? We will look at your pretest and we will have a, a document for you where you can see what you need to do and tick it off what you already have uh, done. And in the end, you will uh, have done everything and at least know something about the time you spend and where your weaknesses are. So we are going to do that together uh, to create that plan and assist you in having that checklist of all the elements what is in the CSC program. Then we're going to the part of the materials. The materials, I mentioned it before, we have three nice books and if you see something on it, this is uh, one of those books, uh, nicely printed, but I can also say you in this time it's somewhat harder to get goods shipped out of, for instance, the US to the Middle East and to get you those materials on time. Luckily, they have a solution for it. It's also online. So we have uh, po currently possibilities to get it uh, uh, on an iPad, even on your mobile phone, on your laptop, and have a part of also the learning system inside. So we have those printed materials, the books, but also the online version uh, of it, what you can use in all the parts. Those reading materials consist about those thousand patients with the most current APICS body of knowledge in those three modules, uh, supply chain design, planning and execution, and improvement and best practices. Then we have those web-based study tools that's in the learning system. And there you will find all those elements as pre-test, as post-test, that smart study tool, modules and, and, and section quizzes, progress required parts, practice exam, and a lot of more things. That database of questions is having over a thousand questions you can use for practicing it. Um, at the moment you assign to the course, we cannot ship Usually you get it in a face-to-face -face course on the course day, but the, the global shipping has been suspended. So at this moment, we do not get any materials out of the US or it takes a lot of time. So we will provide you with all the digital learning materials uh, as fast as possible and receive the printed material later, later on so that you can use it. Uh, but you can use it uh, as a downloadable file format. I believe it's an EPUB and something else on another system. In the second step, we have to study the materials. And there's one thing I have to admit to that one. There is no substitute for it. You have to read or at least to do something with it and get familiarized with what is in the books or on your iPad or laptop. But we can at least slice the elephant a little bit for you and help you where to focus on and see what you need to do. And that's usually what we take in the, in the learning system by making some quizzes and answering uh, some questions on that one, because then we can see where our weak areas are. And some people prefer, because they have some background knowledge, to start with questions and then look up in the books and read the, the, the parts they do not understand, 
other people want to first read and then do the questions. But you have to do something in it. I will show you a small video in which you can see something about uh, what the learning system is. So if we have made a complete plan and we have studied the materials, we have to reinforce the concept and to practice on that one. And how are we going to do that? Of course, we are going to use the instructor-led online uh, sessions. And in those, we will first focus on what is in the book, what is in the materials, and of course, give you the summary of the topics, what is in the uh, reading material. We will go through every part of the book and give some additional information. And it's useful because then you can place all those nice, let's say, information into perspective. And then my, my ability of, let's say, the storytelling guy with experience in how it works in practice is coming into it so we will spend a lot of time on that part we are not going to sit together and to read the book together online we're going to slides and having some in-depth information the other part what we are going to do is some case studies and discussion activities so the online sessions it's it's different from what we are doing now where you are on mute you are not on mute we have to do it together and to bring and you get activities what we are going to discuss, discuss over there. 
The other part, what we are going to see, it's look at questions and not in a way that we are going to look in the question that I show you how you have to type the answer, but more how do we get the correct answer? Why is the rationale on this question, for instance, an efficient focus supply chain strives for stable customer demand for low forecasting out little or no adaptation? How did I know it? Where can I find it? And why is the answer I was giving a long product life cycle not correct? Because that will give you that, that ticket to a passing rate on an exam. How that will work in, let's say, certification and concept, I will show you in uh, the next video. So what are the next steps? Uh, the fourth step is, of course, we, we, we planned our studies. We have studied the materials. We applied the concept and practice, and then we have to go to that exam. What is 
the most important step is decide when to take the exam. You can always register for an exam. And currently, uh, it's, it's, it's also an on-demand testing. So you ask, you plan it, and it's there. There's only one advice on that one. If you schedule your exam and you decide not to go, you have to reschedule it and you have to pay a fee for it. So most of the times, we advise that people plan their exam, but do the actual booking, uh, let's say, if they know they are going to make it in their sc study schedule. You have to arrange your eligibility. And that, that's one of the questions I've seen online, and I think it's coming from Fryes. Uh, what is there uh, as prerequisite? What you need to have is three years of related experience. So you must be able to have worked in supply chain functions for three years. That's one. Or you should have a bachelor's degree or international equivalent of it. There's a list of it. So that can be one of your, your parts to come in or have an active CO2D, CPIM, CFPM, etc. credential. You did already something. For most of you, this should not be a problem um, to get uh, into the program, but you have to prove that to, to APEX before you can schedule an exam. That's called the eligibility process. But I will help you with it and at least give you what you have to do to get to pass through that uh, first element. Then you have to purchase an exam or get the authorization to test. That's also a process where Liron will assist you in, in how to do that uh, in an efficient way. So then you have all the parts. You know where you when you want to take the exam, you are allowed to take it and you did buy the exam. And then you actually schedule and take that exam. It's a one three and a half hours timed exam, which will give you 150 multiple choice questions, of which 20 are let's say test questions. The only difficulty is, is that you do not know which 20 are not counted, but are being tested by APEX. Uh, you will get a result instantly, uh, normally, if you are testing at the test center after the exam. So you don't need to wait for five weeks, you get directly uh, response. And then the last step is to pass that exam and add those credentials, CSTP, behind your name. What can you do to take the exam? The exams are offered all across the globe. Uh, there are some countries where it's difficult. Last time I had something, I think it was in uh, Somalia. There it's difficult to get it. But in most of the countries in the world, it's possible to take an exam. And especially if we look to the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, if we look to um, Emirates, there are plenty of uh, exam centers where you can do it normally because currently there is a virus and most of the exam centers are closed so for some people this is the point that they say after one hour i hear that i cannot take an exam i have to study but i cannot take the exam and i do not know when to do it but we have a solution for it and that's what we call a proctored on view exam. So you take the APEX exam in an environment where you have camera and sound, where your, uh, uh, let's say, room is closed. And of course, you are not allowed to speak, to do something, to go away and to use books. But you actually can do it at your own office, at your ho own home. Only uh, they will look around with the camera and monitor what you are doing. So that's a very good option where you can do it on home and where we can finalize the course also in this uh, strange uh, period. Is it 
possible to pass the exam? Is it easy? Um, as mentioned in the beginning, it's doable. That's the first part you need to know. You need to work for it, but it's doable. You can pass that exam. And if we look in, let's say, the averages all over the world in the past five years, we see that the ones who are going to the exam, in average, let's say, two-thirds are going to pass it. In this one, I also have to say, it's also included the ones who are coming for the second or third or maybe more times. So, but at least it's doable. And also one of the myths, what is there? I am not from North America, so it's more difficult for me. The math shows something else. Maybe they have some advantage because they are English speaking or American speaking, but you see an average, it's almost the same. But now for you, if you take that exam, I can only give the experience we have within Libro. If we see that people who take the instructor left course and uh, did their, let's say, their homework in, in the system, 75%, so uh, three quart pass the first time. There's, let's say, some people need to do it for uh, a second time and uh, for the other ones they didn't go to the exam yet due to all types of reasons which can also be i have to be honest in that one that they are not interested in doing the exam they just want to have the foundation of supply chain management what we advise you always is that you don't go to the exam or don't plan the exam if you have done the complete reading and uh, learning system and if the online tests have an, uh, a rate uh, below that 70 percent so go only over there if you are prepared and why am i saying that it's not a campbell in the apic certification they are let's say set up in such a way that you need to be prepared and as the exam it's not let's say uh, cheap it's not worthwhile to do that candle just prepare take some time do it and you will make it and that's basically what's apex about and after that people are saying you did it and uh you are surprised you are happy because you are one of those who passed that exam. So why should you do it? And I will finalize with five elements why it's important. But start with one which is not on the list. And I give you an example from my own experience, not with APICS, but with, let's say, project management. I'm doing projects for 25 years. Every time I came to a client, I had to explain that I knew something about projects. And then I started to do a certification. In my case, it was PRINCE2 certification. And after that, I never received that question anymore. The same applies for APICS. If somebody wants to know something, if you know something about supply chain, if you have this credential, it's not an issue. They take it for granted and they will never ask you again. Another side, what is it? Take away, if you look to the current situation in the world, uh, they expect economic crisis. And think for yourself, maybe your job is not secured and you want to go somewhere else. Who would you choose? Somebody with a certification who has a proven record of doing something or somebody who hasn't? You have to think about the answer, but I will give you those five takeaways what is there to do it. One is, is that you will be able to manage horizontal flows. And uh, that's, that's typically because all the companies we work for, they are managed not horizontal, but vertical. So you are able to make connections between the silos in companies. The second one is, is that you understand the importance of aligning the corporate strategy with a supply chain strategy, because there's a linkage between the two. 
if a company wants to go left, your supply chain strategy should also go left and not right or in the middle. The third one is, is that you have to understand the importance of using the right technology to enable the supply chain. If they talk about uh, barcode scanning or blockchain or other topics, you know something and may, can make decisions about it, or at least give people the expert opinion and if it's useful or not in your situation. The fourth element is that um, you are able to relate, to manage your supplier, but also your customer, and to oversee how you can flow those products through a complete company. Last but not least, you have techniques of continuous improvement. Look at flexibility, also agility. What is how do we, how fast do I move? And uh, not to mention also how we can breathe, how we can survive and make uh, supply chains more su sustainable. And they all will have their impact on the return of investment of the company. This is what I had to bring to you, but I think it's giving some more questions uh, out and uh, give back the microphone to Peter, who is uh, having a good overview of all the questions you typed and you brought uh, to me. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. It's been such an insightful session. I mean, I even, I deepened my, my, my knowledge in some of the parts of the, you know, of the body of, of knowledge and inform general information about the course. Uh, yes, we, we received indeed some, uh, some very interesting questions. I will try to summarize, you know, the, uh, the most interesting ones uh, for all the questions that we're not going to manage to answer uh, today, because in any case, it, it is a limited time. We will uh, provide the feedback after the session. We will answer to, through email. Now, uh, one of the uh, most interesting uh, questions is how CSCP helps a person to move up the career ladder. Everyone, you know, is interested uh, in advancing in, in, in his or her career and how this having this certification will help them to go up the ladder and go on a more senior position. Um, first, first of all, there, there are some investigations. I do not have them. Uh... Uh, at hand at this moment or in the slide at this moment, where it's proven that people who took APEC certification get, let's say, increase in salary or increase in position. They have investigated it at, at APEX and there is some proof about it. So it certainly will help because what you will see in the end, you have studied that complete area of supply chain and people within the company will recognize that you know more and that you can do something. It's also something about supply chain management. So you oversee everything and it's easier to get them in a management level as, um, as without that part. What I also see is that people doing that certification and de 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 decide by themselves, yeah, the function I'm currently having, it's not giving that satisfaction. They go to another company and they get hired uh, more easily and the third one i've also seen some 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 let's say some candidates who passed the certification exam but before they they passed it they already get some offers from other companies if you have it you can come to me okay. so it's uh, it's indeed helping you ah last one on that one especially, let's say, some American-based companies or, or stock-noted companies, they usually require that you are APIC certified to get into a supply chain or logistics uh, management function. Yeah, yeah, they, indeed, indeed they do. Even some of the, the companies in the Middle East do that. So, Yes. It, it, it's, it, it's spreading <laughs> all over the world. Uh, I received an interesting question uh, about the, the impact and the benefits of the CSCP for people who are working in supply chain but want to move to another uh, to another field within the, the wider supply chain. Let's say from a person who works in material management or logistics to, to move 
to inventory management or whatever, or someone working in procurement to uh, move to, to logistics. How the CSCP will help those people who want to, to change uh, their, their job, but still remain within the, the wider chain? Yes, that's, 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 that's a very good question because then you can look in, in some parts. One is, is that with CSCP, you oversee everything. So you know what the areas of interest are, but it can also be if you look for, if you currently, for instance, work more in the warehouse distribution part and you want to go to the production part, you can also think of getting another APIC certification, the CPIM, what is focusing on that part. So you can look at that at two directions. One is taking another specialized one or looking at it from, let's say, top down with CSCP. But at least you get in all the programs an overview of what is going on in supply chain and moving those products through a company. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, another one which uh, really, uh, I think it, it's a good uh, question for you, uh, taking into consideration your experience with, uh, with project management. Uh, I received three different questions by three different people um, about the link between project management and supply chain. Uh, whether, uh, how complementary they are, uh, which one should they go for first, let's say for a project management course or a supply chain course, how they, they add on to, to each other? I think they are both relevant courses, that, that, that for sure. But if, if we look in, in, let's say, project management courses, that's more or less the process you are going to do. The process of managing a project, of changing uh, 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 organizations. So actually you can do process management for, 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 uh, for project management for everything. If you have to build your house, that's project management, but also if you change uh, another IT system. So it's very useful if we go to let's say APIC certification, the focus is not on, let's say, managing how you make that change, but it's it's deciding in what you are going to change. So it's more, let's say, content driven as process driven. Uh, to, be, to be frank with you, to be honest with you, what I have, I have, of course, a solid background in supply chain and supply chains in general. And that I'm using as a project of, or a program manager, because you have to make decisions to get inside, to get into the depth of those processes. If I do not understand those processes and know the in, uh, interaction, I believe I cannot make that decision as a, as a project manager. But on the other hand, I've seen also project managers who manage um, sometimes that's, that's happening, for instance, in, let's say, governmental organizations uh, where they have to manage this, the change process. They are not focusing on the content. They are using people in the company for it. But it's always, it's, a, yeah, what is, what is, what is the best? I, I do not know. But I prefer to know what is happening, to know the content. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Um, another one, it is about, especially about uh, people who have more than seven, eight years of experience, uh, especially across multinational companies, uh, like just a short, uh, you know, uh, comparison between the CSCP and other supply chain certificates. Uh, how uh, the CSCP is better than, uh, you know, competitive, uh, you know, certification programs such as CSCM or CISCP provided by the other academies? If you look to the other, other, cert, other certifications, uh, of course, it's about supply chain. So they, the, the content is not always uh, different. What you see with APEX, and therefore it's valuated a lot in the world, that they're testing, you cannot cheat it. It's indeed, if you pass it, you have a certain level. With other ones, you maybe, so for instance, I'm not giving those uh, exams. That's a separate organization who is doing that. 
it's even worse if I would be part of, let's say, the certification committee, I'm not allowed to, to give any trainings. What I am allowed to is it's to, to and I also did it, uh, to create questions which are going in the complete testing procedure and then maybe it ends up a lot different as I have designed it, but uh, we deliver content. Um, that's the, the main part what is with Apex. It's not, it's doable, but it's not, not easy and that's why uh, companies recognize it a lot. Are the other ones rubbish? I cannot tell. Uh, I don't, uh, some are, but most of them not. But the, the other important part is, is that Apex is known in most part of the world and the other ones are usually focusing on, on a certain country. Like SIPS, it's focusing on the UK. And if you are in the UK, I advise you to take SIPS and not Apex, but you're not in the UK. Yeah, Is that yeah, answering absolutely. enough? <laughs> yeah, uh, one more short uh, question. Uh, just allow me to uh, check. Who, do you hear me well? I, a bit, I think I lost my connection a bit. Do you hear me well? Yes, I hear you well. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, an, another short question uh, about the, the learning kit, the, the books. Um, se several people wrote me about that they had uh, they attended the course previously, like a couple of years ago, or they bought the books by themselves. Um, uh, whether the content is the same, whether they can take the exam now, they, they haven't taken you know uh, the, the exam so far. Whether the material in uh, in the books of 2018 or 2017 is much different than the one now in 2020, and can they uh, you know go for the exam this year? Yeah, what is what is what is there? You mentioned I think 2017. I have to look it up when the change was, but it's usually it's between three and five years they are going to revise, let's say the 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 the, the, the exam content manual. Is it completely different? Uh, no, but you get other uh, accents on on topics. So if I if I take for instance I'm I'm teaching this for since 2006 in 2006 with the first version we had a lot about IT and technology and there was one complete book about uh, customer and supplier relations if you look now and risk management and sustainability was not in if you look now you see risk management has gone away from, let's say, two slides to a complete part of a module. You see changes. Um, I cannot tell you from 2017, I have to look it up in how big the changes are, but uh, if you did it then, uh, I'm sure that a lot has been forgotten. So you have to start all over again uh, uh, in studying to get uh, the alignment. Um, but I think if that this is a particular case, we have to look, and I can I can yeah let's say work with that delegate to map and to see the best way in how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, finally, um, about the uh, let's say the expiration uh, of and the validity of the of the certificate. Uh, or, or I have, sorry, I have even a better one. Um, let's take the, the current situation the, uh, with the with the COVID nineteen. How uh, processes are affected by the by the crisis, and how having such a such a knowledge, uh, you know, uh, which is in the content of the CSCP can help them. Yes, that's that's a very interesting one because because I focused also on that one and. Uh, I would love to do a complete webinar on it, but that's that's another other topic. If you look, the first one, bullwhip effect, that's all over the Apex materials. Nobody understands it, but uh, you see it happening now because we rush to the shops. We see a spike in demand, and it's moving towards uh, the complete supply chain. If we take only an element as risk management, that's that's what we are doing currently. 
if you look to governments currently, they are assessing risk and they say, okay, the risk that people are going to die or we cannot take care of, of in, in hospitals is that high, we, won't, we will close down countries. Uh, we go into a lockdown. It has all to do with risk management. They look at probability, they look at impact and they take actions on it. Um, currently, there is a, a, a lot of people who are saying we also see the impacts already. Uh, uh, we do not move goods, we do not fly, but we see, I've seen pictures of Wuhan in, uh, let's say, in, 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 in during the crisis and one year before, and you see clean air. So there's a lot of topics which are currently being addressed, coming up, which are there. What are crucial parts in my supply chain? Uh, Wuhan is going down. Do I have any insight of my suppliers over there? Now Italy, now the US. Do I have an overview of what the impact is? Are there suppliers? Are there suppliers from my suppliers? And that is all has to do with supply chain management. That's the element where we are going in. And Getting that picture, that broad picture of what is happening outside of your company, that's CSCP. That's what you find the concepts about. So this is, this is, this is really interesting to look it at is. what's happening currently. And, and you stop, you lock down something. Uh, shops, of course, are not selling, but do we see more online? I think that Amazon announced to I think it was to hire 75,000 uh, additional staff because there's a shift over to the online. You, I'm sure that supply chains, but also let's say business models are going to change after this crisis. And it's interesting to be in that and to see what the impact is uh, in supply chains and know the concepts about it. So the courses will be a lot more interesting because it's <laughs> happening. Yeah, I, I believe so. I agree. I think we uh, everyone will learn uh, out of this this crisis situation. Many will uh, will implement everything that they they figured out and learned into the the new the new curriculums and their new ways of working. Uh, Paul, uh, I think we can uh, we can wrap it up. It's it's been a pleasure. I think. It's been such an informative session. Uh, a lot of interesting questions. For uh, all of those questions which we didn't have time to, you know, to answer, I will uh, reply separately to each and every one of you, and we, we will send the the, the answers. Uh, Paul, thank you once again. Uh, yes, I hope we will you. have a very <laughs> very interesting uh, cases to to work on together in the upcoming period, especially when the the crisis comes down. Uh, for all the all the participants, all the attendees, uh, thank you very much once again uh, for being with us, for following us, and for being engaged and asking questions. Uh, just another reminder about the the two hundred dollars coupon for the for the courses that you can use. For any information, please feel uh, free to approach me uh, or Theodora. Thank you. Have a pleasant evening. I will put on the screen for one moment your <laughs> telephone number. <laughs> and uh, how they can reach you and how they can reach Theodora. That's also an important one. Uh, and if you have, let's say, more content related uh, questions to me, try to find Peter or Theodora and uh, address them to them and they will pass it through. And uh, the last remark is don't wait till tomorrow. Online we can do the same course with the same quality and uh, the same engagement. Uh, don't let the virus take you away from getting the APEX certification. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay at home. <laughs>